Welcome to another TLDR video, and in this one we're going to be explaining the concept of a four-day work week. It's been a Green Party policy for years, and more recently it was introduced in Labour's 2019 manifesto. It sounds like a nice policy, I mean, who wouldn't want a four-day work week? But the question is if it's some left-wing utopian fantasy, or if it's the future of work. Just a quick shout out to our merch stores. We have two stores, one selling t-shirts, hoodies, mugs, etc. and the other one selling our pin badges. For Black Friday weekend, we currently have 10% off both stores if you use the code BLACK. The offer is only live until the end of Monday, and it's the last sale that we'll be offering before Christmas. So if you want to grab something, you know what to do. When Corbyn discussed the four-day work week in the first leaders' debate, there were some in the audience who just laughed at him. Mr Country. Corbyn responded to this, the... and this is the proposal for a four-day week for workers across the economy within 10 it years of the about, government. It is about reducing the working week all across the economy, paid for by productivity increases all across. Britain works longer, <laughs> longer than most. But, well, people need to be aware that actually a shorter working week is probably a good thing for their health and well-being, but as is decent pay. But as wild as this policy might sound, there's a pretty obvious historical comparison to this whole debate. Here's co-leader of the Green Party, Jonathan Bartley, explaining. CSD. Yeah, I mean, they, 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 laughed at, they laughed at Henry Ford, didn't they, when he said, let's move from a six-day week to a five-day week yeah. at my car factories. <laughs> you yeah. know, and now it's commonplace. Over the last, so we proposed the, uh, the four-day week, I think, two and a half years ago, three years ago at our party conference. Um, and it, the idea just exploded. It was before Labour were even, you know, kind of thinking about it. And um, you're, uh, you're the cool kids. <laughs> <laughs> As Bartley just said, Henry Ford cut the working week down from six days to five, as it is now. Back then, he was mocked for being a silly fantasist, and now most of the world works a five-day week. Similarly, legendary economist John Maynard Keynes predicted that we'd end up doing only about 15 hours of work a week. So what are the arguments in favour of doing this? Well, the most obvious thing is that it would be good for us. Imagine Thursday being Friday, and three days of peace and relaxation before the next workday. You'd have more time to hang out with your family, as well as extra time to pursue your more fulfilling hobbies. The downside is that if you're only working four days, you'd expect to have 20% less income, unless you're going to shift around Friday's hours into other days of the week, ending up working 10 hours for the other four days. After all, how could your employer afford to pay you the same amount for doing 20% less work? Well, this is where it gets interesting. Proponents of the four-day week argue that actually having a bit more free time causes an increase in productivity. So if you're an employer, you can actually afford to keep paying your employees the same wage despite the time off. That's because some argue that they'll be working more productively on the days that they do work. A New Zealand company called Perpetual Guardian made headlines last year after finding a 20% increase in productivity when they committed to a four-day work week. Note that you'd actually need a 25% increase in productivity to fully compensate for the lost day, but a 20% increase would mean that you get basically the same result as if you work three eight-hour days and one nine-hour day. In fact, Microsoft trialled a four-day work week in Japan and found a massive 40% increase in productivity. This means that economic output actually improved when employees started working shorter hours. There's been some academic work done on this subject too. A massive meta-analysis by academics from Oxford, MIT and LSE examined 1.8 million employee records collected by Gallup and found, to quote, a meaningful increase in well-being yield, on average, and an increase in productivity of 10%. And also that publicly traded companies with a happy workforce perform better on the stock market. Assuming a four-day week improves employee well-being as it did for Perpetual Guardian, employees can expect to see improvements in productivity to compensate for the lost hours. You can also expect to see people taking less days off, as the government estimates that there are some 5.5 million days off last year in the UK were down to workload stress. Interestingly, this research between working hours and productivity holds across countries. In the UK, we average about 38 hours of work a week. According to the latest OECD data, our productivity is about $35 per hour. The Netherlands has the shortest working week of all developed countries, at 29 hours, and a productivity 20% higher than the UK, at $62 per hour. The same is true in Denmark, Norway and Germany. In fact, let's plot all of the OECD data from 2018. As you probably already noticed, there's a trend going on here. 
There's a negative correlation between productivity and the working week. As any good economics teacher would tell you, shout out to Mrs. Piggott, this doesn't necessarily prove causation. It might just be that productivity improves for separate reasons when workers decide to work for fewer hours. Whatever the case, it's certainly an interesting correlation, and at the very least, a four-day work week might not be the silly idea it once sounded like. Also, with all the developments we're seeing in technology and automation, many see it as a good way of keeping the employment rates high. If automation means that companies don't need as many human working hours, they could either fire staff or reduce everyone's workload. Some believe that by simply reducing employee workload allows more people to engage in work, earn money, and as the data seems to show, not necessarily suffer a pay cut because of it. That's not to say it's the perfect solution. More flexibility in work might achieve similar increases in productivity without losing so many hours. But it is worth saying that the data suggests that more hours don't necessarily mean more economic output. In fact, it might end up meaning the inverse. So it certainly seems that policies like this could be worth considering when governments are policy making. So what do you think? Do you think there's a workable solution? And can you really see us working that much less in the future? As we showed you earlier in the video, we discussed this with the Green Party's co-leader, Jonathan Bartley. And you can find the full interview linked down below. Or you can find an audio version in your podcast app of choice by searching for Too Long Didn't Read. While you're at it, be sure to subscribe to our channel for more updates. You can also hit the bell icon if you want to be notified every time we release a video. And if you want more from us, you can find TLDR across all social networks simply by searching for TLDR News. And if you want your name featured at the end of the videos, just like these people, then you can sign up to back us on Patreon. There's a link to that in the description.